Hello and welcome to the second installment of my As I Learn Watch Kit uh, video tutorial series. Thank you all for the great response I got in the last to the last video. It was kind of something I made on a whim, and so to hear that it was you know helpful and useful was kind of in some ways surprising uh, in an awesome way. And so I'm going to keep trying to do this. I really appreciate all the feedback you gave. Um, keep it coming. It's you know even if it's just to say hey it was helpful that's encouraging, or if you have suggestions comments that's also really great. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about how you uh, can share data between your WatchKit extension and your main host watch, uh, your main host app for the watch. So the way these this kind of works is a little bit tricky because the data, um, the two the two the two apps, the host app, the you know the actual main iOS app that you would launch from the home screen on an iPhone. Um, runs in its separate sandbox, separate process to the WatchKit extension, um, which is the, the little bundle of code that runs in your phone that drives the projection that's going out onto the WatchKit, onto the actual watch. Um, so they're, they're in separate you know, sandboxes and separate processes conceptually. Um, and so it's a little bit tricky sometimes to get data to move back and forth between them. Um, but you, obviously you really need to move data back and forth between them, um, at the very least for things like configuration and preferences and, and to a certain degree, for a lot of data stuff um, that is probably a bit more complicated than I'll get into here. Um, I've had some blog posts about this uh, on my blog, um, which I'll have a link to in the show notes, but you can kind of get a sense that you really, to have a capable watch kit extension, you're going to need to have a, a way to move data back and forth. And the way that we do this, uh, for the most part, is with a thing called app groups. Uh, app groups are something that was introduced in, I believe it was iOS 8, it could, be, could have been iOS 7, it doesn't really matter. Either way, so an app group is just a way of saying that I want a shared space that I can put things uh, to move back and forth between apps. And it's done in a very, like, because it's a very specific place, it's like you create this spe specially named folder essentially on your iPhone that two things can access or more three things can access. Um, it's still always within your company. It's not like you can have a shared space that other apps can interact with, but it's a shared space that you can use to talk between your different apps. And you can use that to move data back and forth. And for the purposes of what I'm going to do today, I'm just going to show you how you set that up, and then I'm going to have a really trivial example to show uh, that actually working using NS user defaults. Because uh, you can have your standard user defaults, which are uh, uh, siloed by app and by extension, or you can have a shared set of user defaults. And um, this is a way that you can kind of just, it's just an arbitrary key value store. You can put anything in there. Uh, as with most things with user defaults, you probably don't want to be putting data in there, big fat things. You want to be putting things like configuration preferences. Uh, for example, I have a weather app uh, where I use this uh, in the Today View extension. I store in the user defaults things like, should I display uh, the temperature in Fahrenheit? Should I display time as 24-hour time or non-24-hour time? These kinds of things I, sh I put into my shared user defaults. Um, and so my Today View extension can access the data that the user has configured in the main app. And the exact same thing applies here to WatchKit extensions. All right. So the way this works, um, and I've set this up, uh, if you don't know how to set up a WatchKit project, watch the previous video um, where I show you kind of that at a very high level how to create a WatchKit app. Um, this one's going to be much more focused, and so I've already gone through that process and set everything up. Um, and so I have here a project uh, with a you know whose name is Sharing that has a standard a standard uh, host app, which is a very simple iPhone app, and it has an you know an Apple Watch extension and has an Apple Watch storyboard. And so here I am, and I'm going to show you where you go to enable the um, app group. So you go into the Capabilities tab um, of your project settings, and then there's a section called App Groups. And you hit the Turn This On here, and it'll do a little dance, and it'll ask you probably to log in with your developer credentials. And then you'll create um, a new app group. You'll hit the plus button, and you'll type one in. I've already done that, so you don't have to wait for a developer portal. Um, and basically, you'll name it something useful for you. It should start with group dot, and then you put something there, typically with kind of a reverse DNS. So say it's like group dot com dot developing perspective dot sharing. And so that's our sharing app group. And I've configured this for the main iPhone target, as well as when I come here into the sharing watch kit extension target, I also have to configure exactly the same app group. 
And it's vitally important that they both have it enabled. They both have the, this capability enabled as well as the exact same named app group enabled. Um, the act Xcode itself is very good about setting this up, so don't worry too much about that. You'll mostly just come in here, hit plus, and check, a ch you know, check the checkbox in both sides. And there you go. Now you have an app group that you can share data between. And that name is the important, the most vital thing. You have to remember what you call it. So group.com.developingperspective.sharing. That's the vital part. Okay, so let's show what that actually does. Um, so I'm going to come in here and show you kind of how I've set this up. So here is the super simple WatchKit app that I built. Um, as you can see, it just is an app with two buttons, one that says one and one that says two. Great. Um, and these are wired up to our interface controller to two action methods. Um, that's one says press one, the other one says press two. Um, and then in our host app, um, I have something even simpler. So it's just an iPhone app that has uh, a label and a button. And basically what we're going to do is just wire something, wire this up so that when you push one over here in the iPhone app, when you hit update, it'll say one. And when you say two over here, this you know, two will show up in the iPhone app, just to demonstrate that you can move data back and forth this way. Because obviously this app isn't really useful, but it shows the kind of the fundamentals of what we're trying to do. We're trying to show that you can take an action in your WatchKit extension and that data can move into the main app. You could do it the other direction as well, depending on whatever you needed. All right, so next, so here we have our interface controller. So this is the watch kit side um, of this app, of this example. And I'm gonna show how you set up your NS user, I'm gonna use NS user defaults because that's by far the simplest way to do it. And in a lot of ways, for a lot of applications, it's all you'll ever need to do. Um, but the first thing I need to do, obviously, is remember that name that I gave it. So here I'm just gonna make, put it in a string so it's easier to um, reference later. And so I'm just going to make a container under it was called group.com.developingperspective. Dot sharing, right? So that's all I'm doing here is that's exactly the same string as I put in uh, my app group name. And it's important that it's the whole string. So it you know, starts with group. It isn't just the suffix, nothing like that. Great. Now I need to create a defaults object that I can reference that container with. And so I'm just going to. Right, create an NS user defaults, defaults, and this is going to be an NS user defaults, and you, you alloc it, and then you init it with a special thing, with a knit with sweet name. And that's where you pass in the container name. And so now this user defaults, and if you've, um, if you've done any amount of app development, you probably have used that uh, defaults object, the standard one, that's per, uh, that's just, you know, sort of the, the default objects, def defaults. Um, the one that you init with this name is exactly the same way. It works the same thing. It's just a key value store. And so I can put something in there. And so in this case, I'm just going to, to uh, take the defaults. And I'm just going to set value uh, one for key shared data. Okay. So now when the user presses this the, that one button, when they come in here and push one, then I'm just going to... You know, grab that container, open it up, and I'm going to write the value one into that shared data object. Um, super simple, nothing, nothing really clever here. Uh, and then obviously with two, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but instead of writing one, I'm going to write two. Great, nothing, cl nothing too clever there. All right, so now I'm going to jump over into the iPhone app. So this is the iPhone host app, the thing that looks like this that just has a label and a button. And whenever the user pushes that button, I'm going to you know, set the text value on that output label to what I just set in the defaults. And so I'm just going to grab that same code that I had here from before, grab the container, same name. It's exactly the same. Like these are mirror images of each other. Um, and then I'm going to come over here into defaults. And instead of obviously writing something, I want to get the value that I put in there. And so I'm just going to grab that share data. And this is going to be defaults value for key shared to data. Okay, which is, you know, as I said, this is just the exact opposite of what I just did. So in here, I set the value for shared data. Here I pull it out. And then just to make sure that I can actually show you what's happening, I'm going to set the text in my view to that shared data value. And that's it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and first build and run the iPhone, uh, the iPhone app 
by itself just to show that it doesn't do anything. So when I update the value, there's nothing in there, so nothing shows up here. Um, and so now, if I come in here though, and I run, build and run the, oh, simulator cannot be used because it's already in use. Yes, you're the one using it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, so that, that's a common problem I'm sure you're, you're familiar with if uh, you do any amount of iPhone development. It's like, yes, I know the, the simulator is running. I just ran it. Anyway, um, so here we have the WatchKit extension running. I have my two buttons, one and two. When I update the value in my iPhone app, there's nothing there. But if I come in here and I push one now, one shows up over here. And if I push two over here, two shows up over there. And obviously that's really contrived, but hopefully you can kind of see how you could use this to build much more sophisticated things. You know, for example, um, you, could, you could be taking an action on your watch that is updating a configuration. You know, say I have a pod podcast app called Pod Wrangler. Maybe I want you to be able to change the uh, playback speed control from the watch. You know, so you have to go 2x or 1x for playback speed. I can update that setting in my, in my watch extension and then in the host app have that be reflected. Things like that. You can move data back and forth. Uh, and obviously this is really straightforward. This is just using NS user defaults, which in general is fine. That's probably all you need. But you're also probably going to want to move bigger things. And to do that, um, I have just you know, a little bit of prepared code here that I was going to show you um, how you start getting into that. And so, for, so in order to use that same container, you can also access it basically just as a folder. Um, so in this case, you, there's a method, method on NS File Manager called Container URL for Security Application Group Identifier, which is a bit of a mouthful. But that's all it is. And basically, that can get you a URL to that same container name. So that's the same, you know, you would just, that's just putting in um, group.com.developingperspective.sharing. And then you can put whatever you want in there. Say you're going to put your SQLite database in there. Say you're going to point this to where your core data persistent store should you know, put its data. Whatever you want. You could put anything you need in there that you can share back and forth. And there's some great little utilities that are even springing up. There's a thing call, uh, called Wormhole from the Mutual Mobile Guys. Um, that I had a link to on my blog, where you, uh, you know, for, for a structured way of doing this, of having kind of like a messaging system that's just basically writing JSON files to disk, you could build something like that. You could be writing images back and forth. You could be doing whatever it is that you need or want um, to move data back and forth, but it's always going to be coming through this app group, something with this name. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully it was useful. As always, questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, you can uh, find me on Twitter. I'm underscore David Smith there, or you can email me, david at developingperspective.com. Thanks.